Hello fellow composers! In this video I will do a quick overview plus sound demonstration of Gravity by Heaviosity. This is an instrument for cinematic sound design to create sounds like complex pads, tension building risers, earth shattering hits and evolving rhythmic textures. First, how does it sound? Well, let me give you a live demonstration as I play some sounds from Heaviosity Gravity. Tension building risers. Earth shattering hits. and evolving rhythmic textures. Second, how does it work? Well, let's check out the user interface and do a quick overview of it. So when you first open up Gravity, you will see that it is divided into four main categories. Hits, pads, risers and stings. This will give you an idea of the focus of this library. You can then dive deeper into any of these main categories. Let's say you want to do a pad. Uh, then it is divided into subfolders, elements, short, ambient, menus and complex. Let's choose complex. And you see that you even have categories for different kinds of moods for complex pads. So you can do this for any of the categories. For the risers you have different lengths of the risers. For the hits you have impacts, subs, tails, bushes, and so on. Now, the main interface is divided into four tabs here. Main, EQ and filter, effects, and motion. On the main tab, you have three main elements. Uh, these are the punish knob, which is probably the most prominent, uh, which adds saturation and compression and so on to the sound. The twist, which I believe is connected to the motion of the sound and variation and length in this case since we since we are in the riser category if i change it for example to hits impacts you will see that it changes to sample here but punish and twist are still here you have adsr controls over here and some uh, effects like reverb delays etc over here then you have the eq and filter section here which is quite detailed the effects section, which you can connect by using this button on each to the sequencer, which is this over here. So for the last tab, we have motion, where you can sequence different kinds of uh, uh, rhythmic variation to the sounds. Third, what is gravity? Well, here are all the technical specifications from their website, but in its essence, this instrument is a sound design tool for cinematic music like hybrid scores and trailers. So I would not look too much on how many presets and sound sources you get, because the focus is on giving you as much creative control as possible. Alright, so I will now do some live sound design using Gravity. Let's create some cool sounds. Alright, so I have loaded up the pads category and gone into complex and aggressive and I have this uh, preset called Bending Destruction. Let me just play a chord here on my keyboard. Right, so it is velocity sensitive. And let's see what we can do with this. I want to go into the effects section, turn on Lo-Fi, which is connected to the sequencer. If I remove that, get the sound without uh, the rhythmic uh, texture on it but I want to create a cool dynamic evolving kind of um, texture so let's turn on both the filter and lo-fi see ah so here are the advanced filter with the uh, step step seek how do I get back? How do I get back from advanced mode? Back there. Okay, that was kind of hidden. Let's 
try out the distortion, turn on the lo-fi and filter. So let me see. I believe this sequencer here is different from the one um, on these individual effects here. So if I go into... How do I open up the master? Is that the motion? Oh, I can see this now. This motion tab is connected to this sequencer. And that you can assign how volume, pan and pitch. Let me turn that off. Or at, let me test that first. Let me do it on, uh, let's say pitch, so I hear a drastic difference. Let me do it like this, going upwards on each one. You can also randomize with this button here. Right, let's go back to the FX tab. I have turned off this one. Um, let's go to the EQ filter tab instead now. So, how do I turn these on or off? Let's see. EQ filter. Oh, this little button here. But okay, so we have it here. And that is... I don't know, what is this with the three channels? How it is... how is this divided? Master EQ channel... Oh, we have a master EQ as well. Let's remove all, all the bass. Just to test it out. Master EQ is up here. Alright, so... E um, channel one, two, three. Ah, so I guess the sound is divided into three different uh, sound sources here on the main page. Um, I would like to have some graphical representation when, as I play a sound, I don't see anything here. So let's see if I turn these down. All the way there's no sound let's turn up this that's one sound source that's another one and apparently there's no sound loaded on this patch for the third sound source all right uh, so that was the pads section a little live sound designing there to show you what you can do and learn this as well as I do. And then we have the hits. Let's try out designing a hit with impacts menu here. So we have different kinds of impacts on different notes as I play them here on my MIDI keyboard. Really hard hitting sounds and I think this will be one of my favorites uh, using it when I compose music. So for this I, s I think the punish knob will be used a lot. Let's see, the sample... Tuning... Uh, command left click to go back to the default. We have panning level start. Okay, so if I... I can only take the tail part of the sound. As you can see here, random, what's that? Oh, so if I turn it up... I'm not sure what it does, actually. Uh, so let's see. I suppose I can also layer different sounds, different impacts by playing several keys at the same time. So let's do that one and... No. That one. And that one.
It's not peaking, guys. It's not peaking. It's one decibel to go, hey? All right, so... Let's see, how can you... Okay, so I will check if these... Uh, I can see the name of this specific impact. If, the, if I do a filter here on the ghost step, yeah. Ah, that's good. So if I hit another key, uh, it is completely different uh, uh, de sound designs on that one. So the filter is not activated, but if I uh, hit the F key here again, for the ghost step, that will be really good for layering. So now I can do... Or going low with the F key. And then play the D. Bam, 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 bam. That will come in handy for real. And let's also try designing a riser. Let's go into the 15 second risers. The full menu, let's load it up and see what happens. So what do we have here? We have... Yep, same as the hits. Different risers on different keys on the keyboard. So, let's see if it's the same here. Yep, you can see the name here on the length. Only here. I would like to see the name, like, uh, overview. If I hit the name uh, the key here I want to see what the actual sound is but I have to go into length here so all right no big deal I guess it's the same here so if I go into oh here we see it if I go to the I don't know this will be interesting as well so let's say I want to trigger this breaking gravity if I turn on the lo-fi distortion and filter then if I go back and hit centrifugal, centrifugal. Okay, so the FX uh, tab is uh, on all layers, all the sound sources. How do I then do different things? But here I can do like the filters. Um, let's go back per sound source. So if I Turn on the filter here, as I did earlier. There I can do more layering. I would like to have that uh, on the FX tab as well, actually. At least, like a master FX tab and per layer. Alright, so let's play a riser. So, I will not play it in full because it's six bars long. Now I want to show you... The thing I learned earlier when trying this instrument is this lock button. If I play this and turn it down to like two bars. But if I play another riser at the same time, that is still on six bar, which in most cases makes no sense. So I want to hit the lock tab and then uh, drag this down. You need to cl left click and drag it. And now it's two bars on that key, on that key, on that key, on any key. So now I get, instead of like a long, long riser, I can do even do one tap or one bar. That sounded like more than one bar, but okay. But if I go for eight bars... Hello? I'm not sure why it didn't trigger. And of course, you can drag it into your sequencers as audio, which I prefer to do because then I can drag it around to make it hit exactly where I want it and do some fades, for example, or even a, a complete cut in the end if it's uh, for a different section in my composition. All right, so that was some live sound designing using Gravity by Heaviosity. So if you want to learn even more about Gravity, you can go to Heaviosity's website and check out their demo videos and uh, even some sound examples from composers who have been using this instrument. I want to thank the great people over at Heaviosity for sponsoring my channel with this amazing product. I already love using their Damage Percussion Library, 
and I suspect this one will end up in my master template in Logic as well. My name is Mike, and I will see you in the next video. Do you compose music for film, TV and games, and want to advance your composer career? Then join my Facebook group to connect with fellow professional composers of soundtrack music.